subtle skills, big results. Welcome to the Ninja Selling Podcast. Welcome back, ninjas from all over. Thank you so much for joining us today. Matt and I are here again, and we have a new topic, new information we want to share with you. So I'm excited to be here. Learning modalities is what we're going to dive into today because I don't feel like we focus on this enough. I think a lot of times we get very assumptive of who we're working with and the people that are around us. And I, what, I, what I know for a fact is, is when you can figure out learning modalities of the people that are your, anybody in your, around, your surroundings, you can communicate better with them. You can affect their world in a better way when you know how to talk to them. And we're all different. But there are three main learning modalities that we're going to talk about today. So Matt, good morning. Here we are again. Good morning. I'm I'm pumped to talk about this because honestly, this is something that I don't really pay attention to as much as I should. I mean, obviously, I know the learning modalities. We talk through it and, and in certain situations where we're being specific and we're really honing in and and want to connect, that's typically where I'm like, all right, let's go into learning modalities. But there's a much more broad reason of why it's good to just kind of pay attention to this and see if we can discover what is the primary modality. Because Garrett, we all we use all of them, which is why when we talk about important things like pricing and other things like that throughout the process, that having in your toolkit the ability to touch on all three is extremely important because we don't know which one's going to become dominant in certain situations. But if we know which one is dominant most of the time, we can ask better questions. Yeah, and, and it's important because, again, it, we, a lot of times we naturally think everybody learns like us. <laughs> and so if we're, not, if we're not careful about it, we create a whole bunch of stuff that we're like, this is awesome. And the reality is, is you miss the mark. <laughs> like Half the population out there is like, what are they trying to show me? What are they trying to tell me? Like, what is this? What am I looking at? So... What we need to do is, first off, Matt, let's talk about the learning modalities, but let's talk about who you're going to come across the most to kind of work our way down. Does that sound appropriate? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the first one that's that's the most, right, is visual. That's the one we always go to, visual learning. Visual, you know, that's why we want to see things. We want to make sure that we show people things. And that's where visual comes in. What is it about? You know the stats on this better. Is it 60%? Is typically oh, visual. Gosh, like yeah. I did this, these are these stats are not easily off the top of my head at the moment. They're also dated, the ones that we have. So let's move on from the stats. Just know that the biggest one is visual. <laughs> there's a there's a reason that we get into it in Ninja. Where we talk about showing is better than telling, and we talk about that a lot through the Ninja process. Because again, showing is better than telling. You're going to hit the majority of your people by showing them information. It is the number one learning modality that people have. It's really important to know, though, that just because somebody is a visual learner, it doesn't mean that they don't have the other two learning modalities. We have all of them. We just have a dominant one. So dominant first, the majority of the population is visual. Matt, you want to do the second? You agree with the first one. (laughs) Yeah, so then the second one's auditory. No, go. Uh, oh, is, is it not? I shouldn't have let you do it. I set you up for a pitch, and you just swung and missed. Okay, well, honest, auditory and kinesthetic are pretty close when you look at the split. So kinesthetic is next. Kinesthetic learners are next. Sorry about that, Matt. Didn't mean to. <laughs> that was great. Okay. okay, I was wrong. I admit it. <laughs> it's close, though. It's it is it's really it's, close. It's, it's close. It's a toss up. So kinesthetic learners are next. And if anybody's going out there kind of like, what, what is kinesthetic? Kinesthetic is people that they learn by um, feel, touch, things like that. They, they have, you know, they'll talk about feelings. We're going to get into a little de- more depth, but that's when you hear about somebody who's kinesthetic, that's typically where that comes from. And the last one is auditory. And auditory is a small part of the population. And it's one of those things that you, when when we get into listing presentations and pieces like that, it's why we say it's like, God, stop talking. Stop just telling them stuff because you're really hitting a very small part of the population if you're just telling them what's going to happen, telling them what we should do, telling them what's going on. People are not listening. We think they are, but they're not. 
You know why I flipped it? Because I've been thinking about, I mean, I listen to podcasts. This is a podcast, audiobooks. So much content is going audio right now. That's why I flipped it. But I think this is what the interesting thing about the learning modalities is that just because we're dominant on one, as you've already said, doesn't mean that we can't use the others and even sometimes use the others the majority of the time because you can choose a book or listen to a book and a lot of people will go the audio route, even though they might be a kinesthetic or visual person because of other things. While it's it's more convenient, I can listen while I go for a run. And there you are combining your auditory and kinesthetic, by the way, because you are putting yourself in motion. So I, that's why I made the flip. It is very fascinating, though. Well, let's have some fun with the whole book idea, because I think that this you, you, if you talk books with people, you can actually kind of get a sense of who they are. I'm about as auditory as you can get. The, we have a test in Ninja Selling that we do, and you check the boxes on a certain page, and you know whichever of these three pages, the visual, auditory, or kinesthetic and auditory, whichever one you check the most boxes on it is, will tell you what your learning modality is. I'm like off the charts on auditory. There is not a box unchecked. So with that being said, like I do gravitate towards audio books in for many, many, many reasons. It's funny when you talk to somebody who's kinesthetic about books or they recommend a book to you, they'll say things like, oh, you'll love the paper it's printed on because they can feel it. They can touch it. Like I love hardback books, paperback books, not so much, but like a good hard cover with a nice, you know, was it a dust sleeve on it or whatever they call it? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what they're going. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it is. But you know, they'll, they'll talk about that kind of stuff. That keen aesthetic side really works with them. The colors and the font, and you know that type of piece of it. Or if it has like a gold edge around the outside of the the uh, the pages, that stuff visual people love. Like they get lit into that kind of stuff. So when somebody creates a book. And you can see this in different books of how they cut the pages. Is it a rough cut? Is it a smooth cut? The different types of pieces they put into it. Does it have a little string that you can go to mark your... All this stuff is actually working to all the different learning modalities when you are creating a book like this. And then when they say like, hey, there's audio pieces you can go listen to while you're going through this book, or there'll be audio updates. Audio people are like, audio stuff I can go listen to? Like there's all these different fascinating pieces, but... If you want to get a sense of somebody, you can use something like a book and go like, how would they describe that book to me? How would they give me information on it? You can get a sense because a lot of the learning modalities you're going to learn, you're going to learn about them by asking questions and how do they respond? So it's like you can walk into a house. Let's take somebody like showing property. You can walk into a house and be like, so tell me about this. And all of a sudden they start talking about how it makes them feel. You can pretty much go very quickly to go, okay, they're probably a kinesthetic learning modality. Or if they start talking to you about all the things that they see in the house, I love the view out the backyard. I love the way I can see the kids playing in the backyard. Probably a visual person. If they start getting really tuned into all the sounds that are going on, you know, is that a jet I hear flying over? Is that, I feel like I can hear a lot of echo in this house. Probably an auditory person. Or I could, I could already hear... The kids laughing as they run down the stairs kind of thing, right? Yeah, I, I can hear the family here gathered for Thanksgiving. Thank you, Matt. That's a perfect one. This is what you want to pick up on. This is what you want to be listening to because this is how you will master communicating with people. Yeah, and it will also how you can master helping create clarity. And I will say the auditory one is probably, for me, one of the most difficult because asking questions in an auditory way can be difficult, but you don't have to do it that way. But I, when I look at the showing of the house, I, I'm thinking too, Garrett, as you're as we look at and <laughs> visual <laughs> how to analyze. <laughs> I'm sitting here going like, are you hearing what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I'm like, Garrett, do you see this? And you can't because we're connected by microphones. Um, <laughs> but as you as like flip it the other way, the house tour, if you know the learning modality, you can ask those questions in that format. Hey, can you see yourself living here? You know, do you feel that this could be the home for you? And those are questions that can help them start to analyze that situation a little bit better so they can have better answers for themselves, which then brings clarity, which brings commitment. And this is why understanding the learning modalities is so important in that time 
But Garrett, even if we back up, and this was the whole reason why we started is, is just for our general communication to create better forward conversations, right? If we understand the learning modalities, we can dive a little bit deeper into what's going on in people's lives. Well, they can connect with you. Like, that's the thing. If I'm assuming everybody's auditory and that's how I'm communicating with them, the problem is, is that there's a good part of the population that isn't seeing or feeling what I'm saying. Like, this is not connecting with them because I'm just stuck in this auditory mode. You know, how does that sound to you? And they're like, what do you mean? How does it sound to me? It makes me feel this way. So it's important, especially during this time, this again, Matt, going back to where this came up is, you know, during this month and during this time of the holiday season, we're having everybody pick up the phone and call everybody they can possibly talk to and build relationships with as many people as you can possibly build relationships with right now. And if you understand these learning modalities, you will help them engage more. You will help them be part of that conversation more. And it's not something that you can easily just go like, okay, let me think back to Matt. Okay, what are all the conversations I've had with him? And how did he answer those questions? That's not an easy thing to do. You actually need to be active about it in your communication with people with a little thought in the back of your mind going, what is this person's learning modality that I'm talking to right now? And when you figure it out, you need to get it into their notes somewhere. You need to write it down about them. You need to you know, get it somewhere where you can come back to. So when you do call somebody, you can be like, all right, this person's visual and I need to talk to them about all the things they're seeing out there right now. And we need to talk in pictures would be the best way to kind of put it. Yeah. Well, I think that, you know, you're, you're introducing what goes beyond the question of like, well, what are you seeing? What are you feeling? What are you hearing? Which are kind of the uh, standard questions for each learning modality. But even if we're talking about recapping Thanksgiving, what did you guys talk about at the, at the table during Thanksgiving? What was the conversation like? That's an auditory cue, right? Versus what did you guys go do? Did you go out for any walks and hikes and things? That's kinesthetic, right? And then you got your visual. What what did you what did you look at? What did you watch? Did you watch the game? Yeah. So, and I think that's important. And I was actually thinking as you were talking, I'm like, oh, I got to update this in my CRM and make this. And then you went and, and like mark this down on your contacts. And it is good because as soon as you make a, because when we talk about making phone calls, I mean, we are listening, right? There is just, we are using our ears. And so I think people are already in that learning modality and we all do phone conversations very well. But if we can bring a different feeling into a different sense, because there's also the the five senses that we have as well, if we can bring a different sense involved into that conversation, we're going to make that conversation bigger than just the words. Is that Does that make sense? Yeah, no, it does. And I think that, um, as, as you say, bigger than just the words, I think um, when you really learn someone's learning modalities, you get a chance. And again, there's, a, there's an order in these two. Like, so again, I'm auditory, kinesthetic, and visual in, in that order. Um, so like if I'm going to enter into a project or if I'm going to be working with somebody, I'm going to want to talk about it first, then I'm going to want to do it, and then I can show you what I did. That's my learning modalities. That's how I work. If you find somebody who's like a kinesthetic first and then auditory, kinesthetics will jump right in and they're going to want to like get their hands on it and start working with it. And then they can talk about it and then they want to show you what they did. Flip that all around to visual first. Visuals want to look at it first and they want to sit there and like figure out what all the pieces are and what they got going on. If they're kinesthetic, then they want to jump in and do it. If they're auditory next, they want to talk about it before they ever work on it. Like learning these modalities will help out relationships in your house <laughs> where you're going, why are they just not looking at the instructions and just jumping in and wanting to go do it? Well, it's a kinesthetic person you're talking to. You know, they're not looking at any instructions. I don't look at instructions till the very end. <laughs> and when I'm wondering why I have extra pieces left over. Um, <laughs> I just picture a bunch of like Ikea furniture that's half built lying around. Oh, yeah. It's like, why do they have these little doodads? What the hell are these things for? It's like, no, that you should have had that in step one. <laughs> like, but it, it, again, it allows you to really get into a different level of working with people. And yes, there's all ways we can use this in our business. But fundamentally, what I'm hoping is everybody's hearing out there is, is that through all your communication that you're going to have during this month, make this a game for yourself. See what you can figure out. See if you can learn and, and talk to and, and hear from people. Again, I'm auditory. 
but hear from them what their learning modalities are. And it will literally dramatically change the next question you're going to ask and how you're going to ask it. And it's not going to be in the way that feels natural to you. And that's the funny thing. Whatever your learning modality is, that's what you're probably going to lean to. And you have to stop for a second and think about that question and go, no, 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 no. How do I change that question to their learning modality? And watch how it affects them. And I will say, like, this is a step up, right? This isn't, it's not catastrophic if you're saying, hey, let's look at this. And they're a kinesthetic or auditory person, right? Because they'll say, okay, I'll, I'll look at that. But when you know, you can elevate to the next level so much better. And this can reduce time, can create more clarity, and it can create a little bit more fun too. I mean, because then you're paying attention like, oh, cool, I figured it out. And I think that's the figuring it out is the key point when you ask a question like, hey, let's look at this. And if they come back and they look at something and say, what do you see? And then they say, well, I feel X. They're not going to say, I don't see anything. They're just going to say, hey, I feel this. And Larry uses the the rest the menu at the restaurant as an example when he's teaching an installation, probably in the book too. But he says when when people read the menu, you hear what people are saying because voluntarily people will say, "Ooh, this sounds good," or "This I feel like a steak," or "Oh, look at this! This looks amazing." And that's an example of a setting where you can pull things out. So just pay attention to what people are saying because naturally people will say things that are geared towards their primary learning modality. But sometimes too, people will switch it up every now and then because like sometimes I'm feeling like a steak and sometimes that pasta dish looks really good to me at the same time. Yes. And again, auditory people will say, that sounds good. Kinesthetic people will be like, I love scallops. People are like, man, that looks delicious. You will watch people in in restaurants are a great example (laughs) because they they will take all that in in a very different way of what's going on around them. I don't read menus at all. Uh, People think I'm weird, but I go into restaurants and I will just sit back and actually I will I either ask what is the favorite thing on the menu and I will come back with that sounds really good or just to because usually restaurants are not set up for auditory people. I make it easy on myself and just say just pick me something off the menu because. There's, it's hard for me to hear what all these dishes are like. I can like talk to live dangerously, Garrett. <laughs> My wife used to think I was really like, she's like, wow, you're really outside the box when we were first dating 19, 20 years ago. And then she came to me, she goes, you're lazy, aren't you? She goes, I thought you were creative and exciting. She goes, you're lazy. I was like, well, no. <laughs> Not to go off on a tangent, but it would be interesting for you to go and analyze the dishes that come back to you. Because I wonder if you ever, if, do you get the weird dishes then sometimes? Or do you pretty much get like, do the waiters and the waitresses play it safe? Like, well, I'll just get them a burger. Or, you know, hey, well, they'll probably ask, do you have any food allergies or preferences first? And then you say, no, 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 I'm good. And then it's like, okay, you're going to get pasta. I always <laughs> tell them about the food allergies once the plate has arrived, just to watch them squirm. <laughs> That's usually what I do. But um, they usually stay middle of the road in the menu. They pick things that are customers. tell you that I'm vegan. <laughs> no, I love it. I'm like, I have a peanut allergy. Like, do, do, is that a problem? Um Usually one when, when, once the dish is on the table. But for the most part, uh, we're going on a tangent here, but it's actually very middle of the road, usually customer favorites, and they usually will never do the most expensive thing on the menu. Every once in a while, they'll be like, let's see if he likes this, and they'll push it. And I've even had people say, if you don't like it, it's on us. Hmm. Like we push this far, but we're curious to see what you think. So you get all kinds of fun stuff. But a lot of times I do that because I can't picture these, these things. I can't reading the words and getting, I'm, I'm not seeing it. I'm not feeling it. I don't, I don't have a, a way, but when they come and describe the specials to me, sometimes I'll be like, that sounds good. Do that. Right. That's the auditory coming in. Cause they're telling you or they're, they're advising you more. So, I mean, they are telling something, but, um, Matt, you said something a little bit ago that's important. It's that there's nothing wrong, though, in like even though you're an auditory person and the, and the waiter's standing at the table or the server's at the table and saying, hey, these are our specials, and anybody there might say that sounds good because it is a learning modality for everybody. We're just trying to figure out what the primary one is. The primary one is the way you're, best, you're, you're most likely to have the best co- communication with somebody. This is the way I would look at it, Garrett, is I would say, if you can discover the primary learning modality, do your best to form your questions with that learning modality, knowing that maybe some questions you won't be able to. But if you make an effort to make that your primary method of asking questions, you're 
you're going to have some really high quality communication. As it relates to your process and everything else with your business, I would hit on all three as much as possible. So when we come into pricing, we're going to have charts and graphs. We're going to talk to them about that. And we're also going to give them something to hold and look at while we discuss that so that they get the auditory, the visual, and the kinesthetic all right there. And then you can ask a question based on their primary learning modality to spark conversation around it. But I would do it, but don't think that just, oh, just because visual is the best. I'm just going to pop. I mean, this is when in this digital age, and I, I know that a lot of people are looking for the sustainable way of doing listing consultations and buyer consultations. But if we just default to putting something on the screen, granted that the majority of people are visual, we're going to miss people who are kinesthetic. And we're going to miss that opportunity to put something in their hands where they can feel it and look at it. And even if somebody is primarily visual, a lot of times they still like to hold it. So it's interesting is I had a gentleman, I'm giving him a shout out, even though he doesn't coach with me anymore because I love this guy, Phil Greeley up in Seattle. He's with uh, Real Logic Sotheby's. He's an amazing agent up there. He got around this years ago. We were talking about all the different learning modalities while we were helping him grow his business. And he really wanted to be you know, that, that green you know, earth friendly, you know, realtor. And he wanted this piece like, this is what my people expect from me. And it was interesting is he said, you know what, what I can do to make sure that I'm renewable and I'm providing this is he actually sent them an iPad in a reusable, you know, container. And it was awesome. Like it looks so good. It was so professional. And that iPad would show up and it had all the, you know, the links on it and everything that he wanted them to look at. He could talk to them over the phone about it. And they're sitting there holding this really nice brand new iPad in their hand. And they're like, this is awesome. And they're touching it. And they're looking at the box that it came in and the container. And it was the digital part of it. But it was also bringing in this very classy, very high-end, very texture oriented. I mean, iPads are sleek, sexy, and nice. And like they are clean. And those are all those things that kinesthetic people get their hands on. They're like, I like how this feels. Well... What happened was, is with him providing in all those different ways and then bringing this really strong kinesthetic touch into it, he's like, I'm getting a referral from every single listing appointment I'm going on right now. And you can make your presentation even more interactive by touching on this and that goes to there and I touch that and that does that and shows me this. That's really cool. I mean, if you're, if you are going to send something like that, I mean, now you can also have it play sounds and do all the other stuff. So you hit on all three real well. It could be a video of me popping on there and saying, hey, guys, thanks so much for taking the time to look at this today. There's a couple of points that I want you to focus on while you're going through this. And again, your voice, your energy coming through this machine now, which again, hits the auditory people. They're like something to listen to. Well, and I can't need to move on from this episode also without touching on auto flow for a minute here and highlighting that this is why postcards do so well. And so many people move away from mailers think, and I, and I get the sustainability aspect of it for sure. But a lot of people think, well, digital marketing is where it's at. Yes, digital marketing can work extremely well. And I, I think people should use it. But when you send a postcard, you're able to hit on visual and kinesthetic right there, which encompasses a lot of people. Now you're not getting the auditory, so to speak, but you can bring that out through the language that you use on the postcard. But Matt, here, here's also what's important is that every auditory person, their second modality is either kinesthetic or visual. Exactly. So you're, you're getting... Yeah, you're not missing them. You're, you're actually hitting them in the second learning modality is what you're hitting. So that's the important piece to look at is, is that I'm hitting pretty much the, everybody except for this group in their first learning modality. The second, this last group, I'm hitting them either in the second or well, either first or second. So it's very, very, very important. And Matt, you're 100% right. It's why we love postcards and it's why they work so well. And it's why... When I get somebody that turns all their postcards into emails, I'm like, man, you just, you just knocked out. Like, it's really all we have is visual right now. And we really aren't hitting on any of the other learning modalities at all. Yeah. And that, this is why it's important, especially during this time as y'all are going through your business planning and thinking about your marketing and your auto flow for next year is to, to think about these learning modalities too. And how can we use all three to connect with our customers. And if you are really looking at it and you're saying, hey, I'm missing out 
on utilizing one of these three in a big portion of my auto flow, well, then let's add it back in to make sure that we're not missing out on that opportunity. And, and I'm not also saying that you should only do postcards because if you can get into video and really high quality, well-written and useful, valuable email content, we can do some great things there as well. But you're going to increase your chances of, of communicating well if you're using all three in your auto flow. But I had to share that. <laughs> no, I think it's great. And I would look at all, all of your pieces, look at your 10 step buyers process and what you go through it there and be like, okay, are all the learning modalities hit in that process? Look at your listing presentation, look at your pre listing packet, look at your website. I mean, I'll throw another shout out out there to Jen Egbert in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, if you go on her website, she's got a video right at the beginning of her website that is talking about living in Boulder. And, you know, it's one of those things. I know lots of websites I can go to that just are like, it's pretty much for the, you know, simple visual and there's really no keen aesthetic. It's interesting is when you bring in like this video that she put together of all these different aspects of living in Boulder and the lifestyle. And uh, it's very much keen aesthetic. You're watching people run and be out there. And that ties in with their keen aesthetic learning modality you know, be out in the wilderness, you got running water and all kinds of stuff. You got this, I can still hear the sounds of that video. And those are these pieces you can bring all in and be like, how can I incorporate this into everything that I'm putting out to make sure I'm, I'm hitting all these pieces? And it will make a difference in how you connect with people all day long. Yeah, no doubt. Anybody else we want to call out? Any shout outs, Matt? You want to throw anybody else out there? <laughs> Uh, man, I mean, you know, we haven't done a review in a while. We could, we could wrap it up with a, with a good review as I try to scroll for those new say, reviews that come in. on the spot, man. Well, <laughs> no, as I'm like, wait a minute, should well, I do this right now? But I do have one here. Well, um, no, go ahead. You got something you want to say? I was just, I was just going to wrap it up. I was going to, while you're looking for that, I was just going to put a bow on today and just be like, uh, I want to say thanks to everybody. Um, I love the fact that we get to go down these different topics and different ideas. And, um, I hope like today, uh, this is, this is a little outside the box for people. This is just going a little bit of, this is deeper than most people go. Even the best ninjas I know, a lot of times don't think about these types of, uh, learning modalities and how they're addressing people on this type of level. But it's really, really, really important if you want to create really long-lasting, meaningful relationships with people. You've got to know these. Sometimes we do it accidentally. A lot of your best friends, we've accidentally fallen into people that match our learning modality roles because we can communicate with them on a way that they're like, man, that person really understands me and how they talk to me. It's just kind of an accident sometimes. But for the most part, big picture, this is... Um, this is kind of a little bit higher level type stuff. And I hope people got value out of it. And I hope you understood it. And uh, if you leave this podcast going, man, like I didn't get it, but I'd love to know more. Shoot us an email and we can talk more about it and go deeper into it because it really is an important higher level piece. I agree. But it, this is what we're talking about. And this is all about going that next level. I mean, that's why a lot of you are here is not necessarily, I mean, we the basics are important. Don't get me wrong. We talk about foundational stuff because even the higher level people are doing that. But you're also here because you're saying, hey, I want to get that much better. And this is one of those components that you start to practice when you're focused on being elite. And so I think that's cool. I'll share this one. And this is kind of... Uh, almost to pat myself on the back kind of review because this is from one of my clients, Andrew Michael down in the St. Augustine area of Florida. He's known as the veterans agent. Um, he is a veteran himself and he works very, very well, primarily a lot with uh, veterans. And so Andrew, first, I want to say thank you for your service, my man, and appreciate you um, working with me all of these years because we've been together for three years and he's a fantastic agent, so got to give him a shout out. And he says, this is a great follow-up to a Ninja installation. I've attended two installations and have been a coaching client of Mappinelli for years. I highly recommend the podcast for both new and experienced agents. So, Andrew, thank you, man. Really appreciate you so, so much. And appreciate everybody who's tuning in. So, there's a good review. I haven't done one for a while. Nope. I love it. And uh, again, thank you so much for the, the words. You didn't mention my name in there, but I'm okay with it. We will be okay. 
Um, I have another one that mentions you, but I'll save that one for our next episode. We'll save that one for next time. (laughs) Everybody, I appreciate you tons out there. Thank you so much. Matt and I love doing this and we'll continue to do it. And uh, again, have an amazing day. If you want to learn anything more about what we're doing through Ninja Coaching, please go to ninjacoaching.com. There's more information there. And uh, again, we're here for you. And until next time, Matt, thank you. Thank you, Garrett. Love you guys very much. Have a great day. If you enjoyed today's episode and would like more, visit us at the ninjasellingpodcast.com. There you will also find links for more information about ninja selling and coaching. Have an incredible day.